Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here with the Hero Arts May card kit. It is the card kit that featured the mermaids and I'm going to give a quick look at the card kit at the beginning but you can see the contents online and at this point the kit is sold out anyway so it's not available for purchase but those who may have it, um, I hope that this video is helpful to them or those who might be able to find the kit for resale. So there's the ink cubes, there's some bottled ink, there are a bunch of acetate sheets and sequins, which encourage shaker cards, and then some pretty patterned papers that are a little bit unusual. They're a little thinner, but they also have a lot of texture and shine to them. So I thought they were like really interesting out of the box. And then there is, of course, the stamps and dies. There's also a stencil in this kit, but the stamps and dies are always a part of the big value of the kit, and I find that if you like the stamp set, you'll probably like the kit. And I am not a subscriber to Hero Arts, but I ordered this kit because I really liked it, and I would, I saw, like, I felt like I would use it a lot. And it turns out that I really, really loved it, even after making 15 cards for this video, I still want to work with the kit. So that kind of surprised me because the last time I had a Hero Arts kit, by the end of the video, I was kind of like honestly sick of the kit. Not because it was a bad kit, just because like I'd made a bunch of cards with it. Um, but I like this kit because the mermaids are really super pretty and it had a lot of good sayings. So I felt like I could easily make some cards with just the kit. And throughout today's video, I will be adding very little. There will be mostly supplies from the kit. What's nice also about the kits is they come with the coordinating dies for the stamp set and some individual dies that just cut out pretty accessories. Also, that backer sheet there that the stamps and dies came on, keep that. It's really pretty and it makes excellent background, so there's no reason to throw that away. It is not garbage. And I did the same thing the last time I had a Hero Arts kit. I did not throw it away. I kept it all and was able to, even the, the ribbon. So I stamped a bunch of the mermaids and fish and other things and then die cut them out, but I stamped them with a misty, so I was able to stamp in the same place several times. And what that allows me to do is lay down my die cuts, tape them to the sheet, and then that same piece of cardstock, I can use it to cut a whole other sheet without re-taping down the dies. Because I just take that other piece of cardstock and I tape it to the original piece where all the dies are already taped down. So you see that's what I'm doing here. I have a piece, they're already die cut out, I'm taping the second piece of stamped cardstock and then I'm going to put it back through my machine and I don't have to line up all the dies again and it saves me a bunch of time. You may even want to color them first. Some people prefer to color before they cut. It'll work the same way as long as you're using a misty or some other sort of stamping tool that puts the stamps in the same exact place, you'll be able to die cut a bunch through. And so what I have here is a whole bunch of the mermaids uh, oysters and fish and other little things already die cut, colored, ready to go. I'm going to have a blog post that coordinates with this video that will talk about some of the Copic colors I used. I tried to write down the skin and hair colors that I use for those who are interested, but this video is already really, really long. And so if I showed the coloring, it would take even longer and honestly there's nothing really fancy about the coloring because the images are so small I really didn't even do much shading maybe two colors if that um, for the larger areas on the mermaids so as I said keep that backer sheet it's awesome I'm going to create one full-sized card from it and then one smaller square size card from it because you see that there's some printing on it and so you kind of have to cut around that or cover it up. I just had to cut around it. I decided to make a smaller square card with it. So it's going to be a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card, which means that I need a four by four piece of cardstock. So there's a little white border because I prefer that on my cards personally. Um, the back side has sand and seashells, and I thought it was pretty as well. However, for some reason, the back side of my particular piece had been a little bit scratched up, maybe when I was removing the dies or some of the adhesive, because on the front side where the stamp is, it's really like easily removable adhesive, but the die side um, was a little bit harder to get the adhesive off, so I kind of just stuck with the ocean side as what I'm going to use for my cards. And so I have a large card size, like A2's card size piece, and then a smaller 4x4 piece that I'll use later on. 
So there was this liquid ink that came with the kit. I've never used it before. I saw some videos on it to kind of get an idea of what you might be able to do. Then I did some experiments myself. It's water reactive. And so what I did here was I spritzed a piece of um, just regular cardstock, but like heavyweight cardstock, uh, the like 110 pound really thick stuff from Michaels. But I would also, oh, you know, this is, this is watercolor paper. Sorry, I've used both in uh, three different parts of the video, but this is the watercolor paper because I thought I might be able to make a background with it. But what I was finding is mine was not spreading very much. And some people have said that it spread a lot. I don't know if it depends on your watercolor paper, but I personally didn't really like the way this looked. I thought this might become a background, but then as I played with it and as I added the ink, I just, I didn't like it as a background. However, I knew I was still going to use it. I spritzed it some more. I, you know, spread it all out. I made it less controlled. And I thought, you know what, that's totally fine because I will just die cut some pieces out of this later. And you can use a napkin to remove some of the color as well if you like, because again, this is all water reactive. I am using the Tim Holtz watercolor paper, which takes a little bit less water than some other papers. It, it basically, uh, if you work it too much, it pills up. So that's something to consider about it. But it's also a really nice bright white and good for stamping. So not a bad paper, just be aware of how much water you add to it. So again, I'm just kind of playing with the ink at this point because my original idea to create just a sort of like small background area to put a mermaid in didn't work out so now I was just like playing around but at this point I knew that it was as I mentioned water reactive so here I'm taking a clear block and my clear block has an interesting sort of uh, flowerish shape to it um, so I'm kind of doing like an ink smooshing technique and I've done this before with distress inks and distress reinkers and basically I'm just putting a pool of liquid ink onto the block and then I'm going to smush the block onto my card base and it's going to create a um, area of inky color. Now when you're doing this you want to give the, the ink some time to soak into the paper. If you pull it right up you'll get a area in the center that um, just sort of is like a big pool of water and the coverage won't be as solid. So if you notice what I did there was I kind of lifted it up a little tiny bit and smushed it back down and a little tiny bit and smushed it back down to help sort of work the ink into the paper so that it would give me a little bit more solid coverage. Then when that was finished, I felt like it was actually a little too solid and so I wanted to kind of mess it up a bit. And so I'm taking the ink and it looks like a nail polish and it has a little brush on the end. So I'm just sort of like flicking it on top of this uh, background essentially that I've created just to give it, like I said, a bit more of a messier look, a splattered look. And to get it to splatter a little better, I thought it would, it, it would work better if it was watered down. So I put some of the ink onto a block and added water, flicked it around. At this point in the video, as I'm filming, I'm just playing and creating backgrounds and just kind of like seeing what do these products do and then later in the video I'm going to make some cards with these backgrounds so if you're wondering like where's a card because you know we're eight minutes in I haven't seen a card yet that's kind of my process is to experiment a little bit before I go to making cards here I liked the ink colors they're some of my favorite kinds of colors I um, I like a lot of cool colors and um, aqua and deep blue and amethyst are the three colors it comes with and I wanted to see how these inks blended and I wanted to use this stencil. I thought the stencil was really pretty and detailed. I have a couple of ocean stencils already but I think that another ocean stencil is still a great addition to my stamping palette because I like to stamp ocean critters and mermaids are really popular right now. So what I'm doing is I'm adding some of the deep blue and the aqua to cover the background. And I'm using a Tim Holtz blender tool, kind of like what I would use to apply distress inks. And in this case, I just applied the deep blue and the aqua, and I did not add any of the purple because I wanted it to be sort of very traditionally ocean colored. 
And I saw, oh, there's ink left on the stencil. I can totally stamp with that because that's what I tend to do with distress ink. When I'm distressing something, I use the ink that's left over on the stencil to create a second background. And I thought, why not do that right here? Like, that would be fun. So I actually even added a little bit of extra ink because it seemed a little light. And I really thought that because the stencil's kind of detailed, I wanted to make sure I captured some of that detail. So I put a bunch more of the ink on the stencil. I spritzed it with water and I put a piece of watercolor paper over it. And I even used my brayer to like make sure that I got some nice pressure because watercolor paper can be kind of bumpy. But as you may have seen there, it basically did not pick up any ink. Um, I try again with some regular cardstock instead of watercolor cardstock. That, oh, maybe that watercolor cardstock was just like too bumpy. Again, very little ink comes off because this ink isn't very water reactive. The bottled ink that comes in the kit, very water reactive. This ink, not so much. This, the ink in the ink pads. And yet here I am still trying to make it work with water because I just like to, you know, experiment and try things. And, you know, uh, I wanted to see, was it the stencil or was it the ink? Because here it's moving around with water. So I thought, okay, it'll pick up some water. Um, and it does. It does a much better job picking up. But as you can see, it's still pretty light. It's not picking up clear, crisp impressions. And so I wouldn't really recommend that technique. Um, here I tried to like darken the color by touching the ink pad right to the wet paper. Didn't really do much. It's still really light, not really turning out the way I want. And I want to mention that I had to use alcohol to clean my stencil. Uh, because this ink was not coming up with water. Rinsing it, I mean, maybe uh, some soapy water and a soak would be helpful if you think that uh, alcohol is going to ruin your stencil. But here to clean, even to clean off my mat, um, which is just like a plastic sheet, I had to wipe it with alcohol. So just hopefully you can learn from my experiments, and that's why I kept it in the video. And I do wind up using some of those pieces for things in the future, in the, you know, further on in the video. But I thought you know, rather you learn from my experimentation than to waste a bunch of cardstock yourself. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Next up, I wanted to, I want to really make use of the colors of ink, like because they provide you with ink and I don't want a lot, add a lot of extra stuff. I'm adding a lot of cardstock as you can see, um, but not a lot of extra supplies. So I thought, well, rather than finding colored cardstock in my stash, I was going to do what I usually do. Uh, and make colored cardstock that perfectly coordinates with what I'm working on. I hardly ever buy colored cardstock. I usually just use my inks to color whatever little bit of cardstock I want. And then I cut all of these like ocean plants, ferns, seaweed, whatever they are, from those two colors of cardstock. So I made some aqua and some amethyst. And when I first saw the kit, one of the immediate things that I thought of, I saw this ex uh, sentiment. It says, um, oh, now I'm not going to remember what it is. Like the world is the oyster and you are the pearl or something like that. Like a really nice encouraging sentiment. And as many of you might know, um, from watching other videos on my channel, cause I have other kit videos and six by six pad videos. I like to make a lot of cards and I like to donate my cards and I donate my cards to cards for hospitalized kids. So encouragement cards are exactly the kind of card I want to make. I want to make a lot of general cards, but cards that provide um, encouragement or uplifting are particularly good. So the world is your oyster and you are the pearl. So I'm going to make four of this card. I have 10 individual card ideas in this video, but some of those cards I made multiples of. So there's 15 cards in all because there's like four of this card and two of another card but I wanted to show you 10 unique ideas because I'm kind of assuming that you're coming to this video for what can I do with this kit? Not um, to see me make the same card five times. So um, I'm gluing down little bits uh, that I cut from that colored cardstock, that custom made colored cardstock that I made with the ink. And all I did to do that was just smush the ink pad right on to the cardstock. And I do that with distress inks and um, dye inks and pigment inks, they all work for that same technique. Um, you just do want to be careful because rubbing your pads against paper can loosen the adhesive that glues your pad together. 
Um, if you ever have a problem with that though, particularly if it's a Hero Arts product, please let them know. Um, their customer service is excellent, and so um, if need be, they'll replace the pad. But I've also used super glue to glue a pad back on, and it's worked perfectly afterwards. So I'm not saying that as like a recommendation, but contact Hero Arts if anything ever happens to your pad. <laughs> anyway. Um, so after those oyster cards, I was ready to start like actually card making because I'd made a bunch of backgrounds at this point. And so I'm going back to the background from the uh, card stock that th the stamps were on and also that ink smooshed background that I made. And that card stock that it comes on is glossy. So even though it's nice and thick, you can't stamp on it well you mean you can you can stamp what stays on it but like ink is going to bleed really easily on it so I prefer not to stamp on it I am a messy enough stamper without any help from slick surfaces so I created a banner with some simple white card stock and I'm going to stamp the sentiment on that and then layer it over the um, blue background and I'm also adding a little bit of black paper to make it pop so it's an A2 size card the black is five by four and a quarter uh, no, five by four should be like one quarter inch smaller. And then the blue ocean background is another quarter inch smaller. So that it gives a little border all around it. And I'm also using the, you are wonderful sentiment here, because again, I want, you know, encouraging cards and that's another great encouraging sentiment, but I'm also going to use an ocean full of thanks because um, I use thank you cards as well. Uh, I think it's a great sentiment. These ones, the ocean full of thanks cards, I'll keep. I won't you know, add to the donation pile because that doesn't make sense for donations, um, but well, for the kind of donations I do. Uh, some cards, you know, some places you donate might need thank you cards. Anyway, um, I will kind of have like a, you know, a mix of some cards I can use. And I really appreciated that this card kit not only included really cute images, but also really versatile sentiments that could be used for a lot of things. Um, that to me made the kit more worthwhile. And I liked that I could work with pretty much just the kit. And I didn't have to add a lot of extras because I think that, you know, when you have a limited card making budget, it's nice to have a really complete kit like this. So, because I was coloring up all of the mermaids and critters ahead of time, I was able to sort of quickly assemble cards in the end. So there's a lot of prep work in the beginning, but then once you get going, it's kind of fun because you have them all there. So I recommend coloring uh, some images beforehand. Like if you're, you know, like watching TV, coloring off some images or watching some YouTube videos, like right now, <laughs> you could be preparing by doing some coloring as you uh, listen for some ideas or, you know, look up some ideas. So um, I had that stenciled background and it was really bold and busy, which is beautiful, but also kind of takes away from the mermaid. So I wanted to think of a way to tone it down. And there's this pretty white, um, it's not really paper. I mean, I guess it's technically paper, but like, it looks kind of like lacy. It's, it's cool. Um, and by layering that over the ocean stencil, I found that my mermaids didn't get quite as lost. It kind of gave them a little bit of grounding. And again, I wanted to use a little sentiment banner instead of um, stamping directly on any of those papers. I don't think stamping on that white paper would be a good idea. Um, and also uh, stamping on that stencil paper, again, too busy. So adding a little bit of extra layers I find is um, sort of toning it down a bit, making the mermaid pop a little bit more. I made sure that the mermaid kind of overlaps with my sentiment strip again, just to sort of ground the image a little bit more, make it, uh, while the background is really beautiful and I want that to kind of be a star of the show in some ways, I also want the mermaid to be noticeable. So you might remember back at the beginning of the video, I made a mess when I thought that I was going to make a pretty background. And so I took said mess and I die cut two stitched ovals out of it. This is one of the very few things that I added besides cardstock. I added a oval, stitched oval die cut set because as I mentioned earlier, this card kit encourages shaker cards with the sequins and the acetate. So I knew that I would use die cuts for that. And if you don't have stitched oval die cuts, you could trace an oval just as easily. And so I thought, well, you know, that's not 
too much to add to a kit. I'm not adding a you know fancy shape or anything like that. So I hope that um, for those of you who are looking for more pure kit ideas, you um, still feel like you can kind of work around that. If you don't have an oval die, you could use a circle or a square or any other shape as well to achieve pretty similar effects. I wanted to use more of the pretty papers that came in the kit, but I didn't want them to be, because they're six by six papers, I didn't want to only get one card out of each. I wanted to sort of stretch them a bit because they were so beautiful. And so what I decided to do was to make it a little bit smaller and give it much more of a border. So I took the six inch paper and cut it to three inches. And since a standard size card is four and a quarter, if I cut one quarter inch less on that side, I would cut one quarter inch less on the other side. So five and a half would become four and a quarter. So that blue shiny piece is three by four and a quarter. And then I layered the oval on top of it with a mermaid and a sentiment. And I did some faux stitching, which is just those um, like little black lines around it. If you don't feel super confident faux stitching, just, you know, practice making straight lines doodling. And uh, it's, it's not that difficult, but it does require just a little bit of uh, practice. So Next, again, I wanted to use the ink cubes to their fullest ability. So I'm going to kind of borrow a technique that I've done recently in the past with ink cubes. A Simon Says stamp card kit came with ink cubes, and I did this very similar technique with them, but this time I'm kind of curving it a bit. So I'm starting in the center, and I'm pulling the ink cube out to the sides to create this sort of brush stroke effect. I've seen some people where they start at one side and pull it across. I personally don't like that because it creates one side to be really heavy and then only one side to be light. So I prefer to pull from the center. Just a personal preference. You might want to try both and see what you like. And then I'm going to, again, layer it with a mermaid. You can see that you can do it with the curve or straight. I thought the curve was a little bit more interesting, added a bit of motion to the card. Um, but I've done it, this, you know, straight as well because um, that's what I did in the past. So the first time I did it, I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to reuse that technique and then I mix it up just a touch. Because I took the time to color up all these little images at the beginning, these starfish and um, seahorses, clownfish, etc., I felt like I could decorate my cards a little bit more, whereas I think that if I had to stop and stamp and die cut every image as I went, I probably wouldn't have added as many of these little sea creatures here and there. So that's another reason I really encourage you to kind of do like bulk die cutting in the way that I recommended at the beginning of the video and like bulk coloring, like do a whole bunch of them at one time so that it's more like a pre-packaged group of embellishments than I have to stop stamp die cut color every single time. Now I'm on to my first shaker card. I'm going to do two shaker cards, and they're going to be very, very similar. So the second one's going to go by even a little bit faster because, as you can see, this is about a 40-minute video. Um, so to create the shaker, I'm going to use some foam sheets. And you could use foam tape. I found the foam sheets to be more economical. I don't always use them, but, you know. Um, I die cut the oval out of the card front. Then I use the same oval to die cut out of my foam. However, I wanted to not really worry about the foam sticking out of the edges, so I take my scissor and I make that oval in the foam just a bit larger. So that way no foam sticks out. Then I want to put my adhesive on the foam. If I put it on my cardstock, some of the adhesive might be sort of poking out of the foam. So it, to me, it's a little bit easier to apply it to the foam. If you have adhesive sticking out where you don't want it, your sequins will stick to it and they won't shake. They'll kind of get stuck. So here I have applied the adhesive, forgot to add the acetate, <laughs> kind of important. So I'm pausing. I'm going to cut out a piece of acetate. Like I said, there's five sheets of acetate available in the kit which is why I think that that's good because you could probably easily create five shaker cards with the kit and the amount of sequins that they provide. So I'm gluing my acetate sheet down and the acetate is basically going to be sandwiched between the card front and the piece of foam. 
Now, I thought, well, probably the smarter thing to do would be to completely decorate my card front before I start gluing it down because if I try to stamp my card front like the sentiment there and um, then glue it down, maybe my stamping won't be so even. But it's not a big deal either way. I glue down my foam. As you can see, it's a little like messy in the back, but you won't ever notice that. And I'm ready to add my sequins, but my tip before you add sequins, and then you'll hear this from everyone is nowadays, is to put a little bit of embossing powder, not powder, uh, like the uh, embossing buddy or whatever you call that, a cornstarch, anything, that little powder you put on before embossing, put that in your shaker because it will stick to the extra adhesive if you have any, and it will also make your acetate less um, staticky, and so your sequins will move around on it better. It's kind of like using a dryer sheet on your clothes to make things not stick as much. You're just doing the same thing with the cornstarch or the baby powder or whatever embossing buddy you, you know, we put on there. Then you sprinkle in some sequins, and I tried putting it directly onto my card base, but it is like really hard to line up a card base like that. So um, what I decided to do, it's a little bit wasteful, but I took another piece of cardstock and I cut it to about the size of the foam. So like smaller than the card front and uh, just like the foam is smaller than the card front, it's like a quarter inch smaller. Um, I cut a piece of white cardstock a quarter inch smaller, and I just trimmed it with scissors because it didn't really matter. You're not going to see this piece. And now I have like a full shaker sandwich that I can glue on top of the card, and then I can line it up a lot more easily. I've heard some people put the sequins like on the card base and then put that on the foam piece on top. So if you don't want to use the extra piece of cardstock, try that instead gather all your sequins into the area on top of your card base and then line up your shaker piece. So again, I feel okay like adding some extra mermaids and extra sea critters this time because they're already cut and colored and if I had to like stop and stamp and cut and color one, I probably wouldn't have added as many. Uh, something that I noticed is that um, it was good to have a handful of markers and create a color palette so that things coordinated a little bit easier, like the purples that I use for the starfish are the same purples that I use for the Little Mermaid's um, seashell bras. And so things coordinated a little bit better. Here I had that extra piece of purple foam from die cutting. And I had this extra stitched oval from die cutting my shaker card. And I was like, well, I'm just going to use these because, you know, why not? Um, they're not trash by any means. And so I'm going to make just a second quick card with this square background that I had. So it is a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card with a four by four piece of cardstock there, which is that um, background. Then I am going to pop up this stitched oval with that foam oval that I already have. Um, I trimmed a little bit off of it again so that foam doesn't stick out and then I added that um, oyster and pearl sentiment again because I had more oysters already pre-stamped and colored. So now I'm out of backgrounds and I have close to 10 cards but not 10 unique cards and I'm returning to my stencil because I feel like I've barely used it. I tried using it a couple different ways but so far I've only used it one way. And I noticed that the uh, nail polish inky stuff was a lot more water reactive. So I thought, let me try it through the stencil. And so I've taped my stencil down. I use the yellow delicate frog tape because it doesn't rip my cardstock as long as I pull slowly. And I've taped the stencil down to that. I've taped on the back side so that the, the ink color goes all the way to the edges. I put some ink down on my clear block here and I'm using a makeup sponge to apply it. I found that it, this makeup sponge does suck up quite a bit of the ink, but I felt like if I used my um, Tim Holtz tool, the foam might be ruined, which again would be fine because they're not that expensive. However, these makeup sponges are from like the Dollar Tree, so they're like 28 for a dollar. So if I'm gonna ruin something, um, I wanna ruin the cheapest thing, and I wasn't really sure if I'd be able to wash it out in the end. So I stenciled through it, and I noticed that because it was kind of watery, it didn't 
like get perfect crisp stencil images and I really wasn't entirely loving the background again I thought it was kind of busy which I had thought the first time that I stenciled through with just the ink and I kind of said well at this point I don't like it anyway so I'm going to try something else and if it's ruined oh well it's ruined so what I did was I took the same ink and I watered it down even a bit more and I'm taking the same makeup sponge and I'm applying it over it and this is toning down the stencil a lot and creating much more of a monochromatic look and that I like a lot better. So I was quite happy that I kind of took that risk and just sort of kept working with it. This is another piece of ruined cardstock from earlier that I've die cut some of the leaves out of. And um, I just didn't want to throw anything away at this point. I thought, well, you know, if I die cut it a little bit, then it'll still be fine. So I've cut those ferns from it or whatever you call those seaweed. I, I don't know. Some kind of underwater, underwater plant. If you know, feel free to tell me in the comments. Um, but anyway, I'm going to make a second shaker card with them. This time I die cut a slightly bigger oval, but I'm going to do the exact same process. So I've sped this one up even more. If you really don't know anything about shaker cards, I definitely encourage you to watch a much slower video that explains shaker cards really, really well. Here, I'm mostly just trying to show you a variety of ideas with one kit. So gluing the acetate piece down, then gluing down the foam piece. Again, I really should be gluing the foam and not the base because I trimmed that circle to be a little bit bigger, but I'm going to save myself by using that embossing buddy or cornstarch or whatever you have that you put on before you emboss and sprinkle in some sequins. Make sure they don't stick staticky because again, I use the embossing buddy. This time I'll use a few more sequins. If you want your sequins to shake really well, you might want to double up your foam. I chose not to, just to keep it a little bit easier to mail, but again, the thicker your foam, the more easily your sequins will shake about. And then I'm going to put that extra piece of cardstock on there to seal it all up and shake it around, make sure it works well, and then I can adhere that to the front of the card. And I, and that's the background that I created with the stencil instead of, um, you know, using a, I don't even know what other kind of background I used before. Like, uh, oh yeah, I just used a solid white. So this time I created a pattern and then used it for the shaker. So it's a little bit different, but in many ways, a similar card. But I wanted to show you that even if you mess up and make a crazy, like, mess on some watercolor paper like I did with these fern pieces where I just like smooshed a bunch of ink all over the place and it turned out horribly, you can still use these cool die cuts um, to save a little bit of your paper and you don't have to trash anything into the bin. So I'm going to glue some of those ferns down. I'm going to add a lot of accessories around this. For these thin die cut pieces, I'm going to use multimedia matte from Ranger. I know that you can use the Stick It product, but I find that to be way more expensive and personally not worth it to me. But um, if you're going to do a lot of intricate die cutting, I don't know, maybe that's better for you because the glue can get a bit messy, stick to your fingers. I like to use that little fine point tip on it though. Um, and I find that it sticks really well paper on paper trying to glue down the elements onto the acetate, the multimedia mat doesn't work quite as well. Um, and I use traditional dry tape adhesive for those bits. And again, I feel free to use a whole bunch of critters because I pre-colored them all. Finally, I'm at the end of the card kit and I haven't, like I have, I need to do one more card because I've done nine cards at this point. I don't know if you've been keeping track, but there are nine. Um, I need to do one last card and I haven't used that like super awesome marbled blue gold like crazy cool paper. So I'm like, you know what, this time I'll let it be a whole card. I could break it up and make it into two cards and save it a little bit, but you know, let's go for it. And I layered on that white lacy swirly paper that I used a piece of before. And um, I liked it because again, it made the mermaid stand out a touch more. And I'm going to try to use up most of what's left in my pile. I have two mermaids left, but only need one more card, so I'm just going to use both mermaids on a card. 
I was a little bit tempted not to because like I said, I'm not done with this card kit. I really still enjoy it even after making all of these cards, even after spending half a day coloring all the little critters. And so I probably could have saved it and stretched it out to even more cards in the end. But I think the mermaids look cute in little gatherings as well. And I hope that these cards will make some um, some little girls and teenage girls happy. I thought that it was nice that these would be good for like older children too when I send a cards for hospitalized kids. Because I think you know, they probably get a lot of cutesy stuff too. Um, and so hopefully these will be enjoyed by people of all ages. So... Uh, gluing all the little pieces. I'm using multimedia mat and my ATG gun. It's sort of a combination. I like the ATG gun because it's really strong adhesive. Refills are relatively cheap. It's easy to apply for me. I know that a lot of people don't like it because of its size, but I got used to it years ago, and so it's fine by me. Again, going to add the sentiment with a piece of cardstock. This is just like a random piece left on my desk because at this point... My desk is an explosion of this kit, and there's just like cardstock and ink and like messy stencil shoved in the corner so that I can wash it later and just nonsense. Um, so I'm stamping that ocean full of thanks again. I was kind of in a thank you card mood this week too because I had sent out a bunch earlier in the week and needed to replenish my stash. So I probably wound up with a few more thank you cards than I normally would have, and I would have sent a few more away to um, the organization, but. I needed to, like I said, replenish my stash. So again, I'm going to try to use up a whole bunch of little critters because that's what I have left. And then I will glue this to a standard A2 size card base. And that's going to be it for my last card. That purple ribbon that I glued on there also like, is just the sort of decoration that your, comes with your kit. It's not advertised as part of the kit, but why not use it? Um, because, you know, I mean, we pay for ribbon. So I'm not going to throw away free ribbon. <laughs> anyway, um, here I'm going to start flipping through a couple of the cards. There is going to be a coordinating blog post where I talk about colors and measurements. And you can ask me questions in the comments or you can ask me questions in the comments on my blog post. Um, if I forget to include some information, I will link up some things in the video description below. Because even though the card kit is not available anymore, some of the products that I used uh, are out there and you might find helpful um, and yeah I'll link up to Hero Arts too so that you can uh, sign up for future card kits if you are interested there'll be links to all kinds of social media for me if you want to follow some of my other card making exploits if you like this video you appreciate the time that I took to create all these cards please give it a thumbs up I so appreciate that subscribe to my channel to see other similar videos like I said I do a lot of kit videos I do um, six by six card tutorials so if you like six by six paper pads you'll really enjoy those videos and basically that is it for me today. Thank you so much for sticking through this. I hope that you found it helpful and I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.